Hello everyone, this is Alex Bavolsic from HowToDoTech.com and today we're going to be looking at the new Chrome App Launcher. So the Chrome App Launcher, seen in my dock below, is a cool new way to run Chrome apps natively on a Mac. Now this functionality was available on Chromebooks before and on Windows computers. Now it's available on Macs. So Basically what the Chrome App Launcher is, is it's a way to run Chrome apps natively. Now in the past if you wanted to run a Chrome app, you saw something that looked like this. A page in your Chrome browser that had apps, but they just opened up in a window. So if I went and tapped on Google Keep, what it would do, it would bring me to the website um, drive.google.com slash keep. Now I would still be able to access and use Google Keep, but it would just run in a web browser window, you would always have to be online, and it focused it looked like a web page but with the new app launcher if I tap it on the bottom I can actually run some apps natively on this Mac which means I can take full advantage of the hardware I can run them while I'm offline and cool stuff like that now a way to tell if an app is actually a web page shortcut or if it's a truly native running app is to just look for the arrow at the bottom left there is an arrow at the bottom left it's a shortcut to a website say Google search if I tap that it's just going to bring me over to a Google search page. Now this is great because I can do some things with it, but it's not a native running app. But if I go and tap on something like Google Keep, it will open Google Keep in a fully functional window. Now some things to note about this. First of all, it does not get a new command bar um, commands right now. It still goes under the general thing of Chrome. It does get a separate little icon at the bottom. However, it's still called Chrome at the top. It still works just like Chrome if you use commands on here, and um, the only difference is it can be done offline, and it's a little more powerful. Also, if you want to launch into these without using the Chrome App Launcher, something really cool that you can do is go to your launch pad, and apps that run natively, not your shortcuts, but native running apps, will show up under your launcher. So if I, I already put them in a folder, I'll name these Google Apps. And from here, now I have a Google Apps folder. I included the launcher, but um, any app I can run directly from Launchpad. So that's really nice, too, to save time. Now, if you want to get some of these today, it's actually really simple. You'll just want to head over to the Chrome Web Store. You can do this from your apps. You right here. Just click on Store. And uh, once you go to the Chrome Web Store, you're going to want to hit for your desktop. Now, once you do that, you have a tons of different apps. It's not a lot compared to other app stores, but this is quite a bit for a launch day um, amount. So some of the sp more interesting ones are at the top, like Spelunky and Pocket and Google Keep. Now some of the cool things, Spelunky is a completely free game now because it runs in HTML5, but it runs offline completely free. However, not all of these apps you'll find um, are free. Some apps will cost money, like specifically at the bottom. Uh, this app is $2 right here. So they're not all free, but they are certainly nice to have, and of course they run offline. The Chrome App Launcher is a really simple application. You just tap on it in your dock, opens this little folder window. You can search in here if you have a lot of different apps. And if you click the bar on the right, you have help, sending feedback, and settings. Now settings are actually quite simple. You can choose to disconnect your Google account if you feel the need to do so. Maybe you want to change accounts. You also have advanced sync settings. This is great for if you're syncing a lot of different apps together. You can choose what syncs and what does not. Now if I had multiple users, which I don't, I would have multiple users right here that I could change. Um, I also have advanced settings like my proxy, my language input, some things that you'll probably never change, except possibly where you download files to, if you have a separate folder that you want to do that. Overall, it's really simple. All these apps can be taken full screen with the arrow right here, and it's not blown up pixelated, it is completely full screen. However, you might have extra white space if the app does not support it. So we hope you have enjoyed this tutorial from HowToDoTech.com. If you have any questions, please leave them down in a comment below, or you can email us at HowToDoTechYT at gmail.com. We are also on Facebook and Google+, so if you have any questions, you can always ask us there. And feel free to circle us or like the page. You can also click on our YouTube channel to look at more content we have created, or click on one of the icons right now on the screen to go to those playlists to see more tutorials. 
Don't forget to like this video and subscribe to the channel. I am Alex Bavolsic, and I will see you next time.